the campus of Bowling Green University in Northwest Ohio for the MAC championship game. The league's two best teams, led by the conference's two best quarterbacks. For Miami, it's junior Ben Roethlisberger. For Bowling Green, it's senior Josh Harris. out on a cold night with snow in the forecast hoping to warm up the home fans and bring home a championship this evening celebrating our 20th anniversary of live college football on ESPN it's the championship game of the Mid-American Conference champions of the East 15th ranked Miami of Ohio champions of the West 23rd ranked Bowling Green Good evening and welcome to the start of championship weekend in college football. Mike Tirico, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herbstreit. Dr. Jerry Punch will join us in a little bit. Guys, the MAC has been playing football for over five decades. Great teams, great coaches. This by far their highest profile, best season. Fitting that the teams that have won the most championships play for the title tonight. Well, this game is special, you guys, because it's the only major conference title game. The teams are both from the same state. It's a rivalry game, too. And I think there's a lot of animosity between these teams, not just the championship game, but you can see in the warm-ups, the two teams kind of got close to each other, a little bit of fisticuffs, so it's going to be an exciting game tonight. All right, the headline guys are the quarterbacks. They'll break them down. Why don't you take Ben Roethlisberger of Miami? Well, Ben Roethlisberger, I, I think all you have to know about him as far as his ability is to look at the quarterbacks that have been in the MAC: Chad Pennington, Byron Leftwich out of Marshall, and you have to put Ben in the same line as far as his ability is concerned. He's a junior, but he is projected to be a first-round pick if he decides to come out early and you talk to coaches around this league they talk about his ability to see defenses make the check yeah. and throw downfield now Bowling Green's going to put a lot of pressure they're going to blitz all night which is again one of these defenses it's either feast or famine if they get to him it's great if not he'll make them pay on the back end let's talk about Bowling Green they got Josh Harrow the one stat that jumps out at me is he's durable he started 27 straight ball games and he already set the MAC record for the most plays in a season 571 and the thing I like about him most besides the fact that he's 14 and 0 here Mike he's offense he leads the number two offensive football team in the entire nation right here at Bowling Green they are home that is better for them as you mentioned they have success here they played Miami 30 days ago lost by 23 that was in Miami we're at Bowling Green and the championships on the line tonight ESPN 2's college football Thursday the mid-american conference championship Presented by Marathon, an American company serving America. In part by Wendy's Wild Mountain Chicken and Wild Mountain Bacon Cheeseburger. It's better here. And by Sears. Don't just give a gift, give the good life. Sears, good life, great price. Okay, do you remember one by Miami head coach Terry Hebner and coach uh, we talk about the fact that uh, you your opponents uh, they have the home field advantage the psychological advantage because they, they handed you you handed them their only losses here in the conference what do you have to do early on to overcome all of that and be successful tonight we have the confidence advantage we know we beat them once we beat them at our place we know we can do it again this is a new game but we're confident they're we're gonna win this football game we just have to play Miami football hey thanks for your time coach. thanks Jerry well, Michael, the Falcons have won here two consecutive years in a row. They have not lost a football game. Their last loss coming over two years ago to that man right there's Miami Redhawks. Jerry, these teams very familiar with each other, separated by a couple of uh, hours, probably a two-and-a-half-hour comfortable drive. There is Greg Brandon, the first-year head coach here at Bowling Green. He took over for Urban Meyer, who went to Utah and has led BG to the championship game here in the Mid-American Conference. The students, the fans, they're cold. We all are. <laughs> Temperature heading to freezing. Precipitation on the way. Could be mixed. Should arrive in about an hour and a half. Sean Sweesham set. Bowling Green won the toss. Deferred the option. Off we go with the championship game in the Mid-American Conference. It trundles back to Daryl Hunter. Across the 20, and he's brought down at the 23-yard line atop the pile. B.J. Lane, one of the running backs, and at the bottom, Tim Arnold for Bowling Green in the yard. Miami of Ohio in the white and Cardinal red. 
And you bring out Ben Roethlisberger, not too far from here, Finley, Ohio, the junior quarterback who is a record center. Ben leads a team, this Miami football team, that's number four in the nation in margin of victory. That's how good they are. They beat their opponents by an average of 23 points per game. 500 plus points this season. Offensive Player of the Year in this conference won the Vern Smith Award given yesterday. Very humble guy, six foot five, Ben Roethlisberger, the quarterback. Opening drive for Miami, starting from its own 23. First pass, swing out to Cal Murray, the running back who has a first down, and he's pushed out of bounds at the 36. Murray gained 808 yards running. He'll share time with Mike Smith in the backfield. Rest of the guys up front see Mike Larkin there, second cousin of Barry Larkin, all-time leader in touchdown receptions here. Martin Nance and Brandt, the tight end, second team performers. On the offensive line, Jacob Bell, right guard, first team All-Mac. Harold, the left guard, the center, Landot, second team, all Mid-American Conference. Good offensive line. Seniors have nearly 100 starts combined. The sophomores are very physical. After a pickup of 13, this first down run for Murray. Got it back to the 40. Got out two out the 42. Jason Morton in there on the tackle. Let's check this uh, defense for Bowling Green. Second in the conference. They allowed 19 points per game. Maurer starts at one end. Devon Parks, a freshman, has five sacks. We'll also see Mitchell Crossley, nine sacks on the year. The linebackers. Mitch Hewitt's very important. An injured ankle kept him out a couple of games when they gave up their most points, along with Burks and Carswell on that middle line. In the back line, Newson and Morton involved in run support. Jelani Jordan, one corner. The other, Jansen Patton, seventh in the nation with seven interceptions this year. After a pickup of six, second and four. Again, Cal Murray out of Dublin, Ohio. Rick Mallory made the tackle. After a gain of about a yard, also Matt Leininger in on the stop. Well, Bowling Green's not a real big defense, so they're going to have a lot of movement within their interior to try to come up with some uh, some atta an attacking style to try to free somebody up. You'll see a lot of linebackers blitzing. You'll see an aggressive nature. They almost have to do that to be able to get after Roethlisberger. Miami's offense has scored the first in all 12 games this year. They outscored the opponents 139 to 35 in the first quarter. Well, coached football team, Mike. They are. He moves Mike Smith. The running back over on third and three. Bowling Green showing heat, bringing heat. Roethlisberger's throw is incomplete. No flag. The coverage from Jansen Patton, the guy with the seven picks. Three and out. Or a first, a first down picked up, then three and out. And Miami will kick it away. Brought the linebacker there, and it's just a side adjust. Once Carswell, number nine, comes on the blitz, it's an indication of the quarterback and the receiver to go to the side adjust. It's pretty good coverage there by Bowling Green to take away that quick slant and to force the punt for the Red Hawks. Charles Sharon back deep to receive Mike Wafsig's pick. Coach jokes that he may not get a letter this year. 13th game, only his 29th punt. The offense scores a lot. He doesn't kick a lot. Oh, I got blocked by Carswell, the linebacker. And Bowling Green will take over in great field position. T.J. Carswell blocked it. comes up with the recovery first block punt against Miami this year TJ Carswell comes up the middle but the key thing on this if you look to the right of your picture the personal protector blocks the wrong man you're supposed to block from the inside to the outside he missed the wrong man Kirk and I think there was a little bit of confusion there because Bowling yeah. Green ended up coming down and moving everybody to the inside they were clearly coming after the Coming after the punt there, and it confused the Red Hawks with the protection scheme. That, I think right. that forced the personal protector to the wrong man. The personal protector should block from the inside out because the most dangerous man is coming up the middle. Missed him. So, great opportunity for Bowling Green. They start from the Miami 33. Josh Harris, the quarterback, throws it back. Rare catch for Craig Jarrett, the tight end. To the 28-yard line. Just his sixth reception of the year. John Beesing made the tackle. But well, we mentioned Josh Harris, the senior. Big Ten wanted him, not as a quarterback, 
But as a DB, maybe a receiver, maybe a running back, he's ended up second team Mid-American Conference QB. Well, his attitude is why he is such an elite quarterback in this conference. Of course, he has the physical abilities of the ability to run and throw, and they built this offense around him. The thing that I love in talking to him yesterday, looking to his eyes, he wants to be known as a quarterback who won a conference championship, and he wants also a chance to prove that he's a better player than the player that showed up five weeks ago last time against Miami. Did not have a good game in that 23-point loss. Second down and about five coming up. No score. Two minutes in. Harris Gibbs to his back. DJ Pope, yard shy of the first down at about the 24. So P.J. Pope, nearly 1,000 yards. First team all Mid-American Conference runner. Sharon, seven touchdowns last four games. Sanders and Hawkins are good. But Magner touched the ball 100 times. He had 82 catches, this kid from Alaska. Their offensive front, Scott Murkowski in the middle, first team all-conference. His brother was a very good one at Purdue, now with the Patriots in the NFL. Andy Grubb also in that front. Andrew Hart, 62, watch him. He's in for the injured Robert Haley, senior right tackle who starts, not here tonight. Empty set, Harris here on third and short, looking to keep the football. He goes right, he has a first down to the 21-yard line. This Miami defense knows they will see a lot of the leading running attack in the conference led by Josh Harris. This is the top run defense in the league. Across the front, Smith, first team all league, nine and a half sacks. Linebackers, Beesing and Nande are very good sophomores. The guy in the middle, Jones, is undersized. He's the heart of the defense. He's first team all league. On the corners, Hodge and Hunter. The big man is Matt Pusateri. Out of the Columbus suburb of Dublin, Ohio, he's going to be in on a ton of tackles tonight. He's led this conference in tackles this year. Harris looking end zone. Up top for Sharon. Incomplete. Charles Sharon intended receiver. Darrell Hunter in coverage. And Kirk, you're watching 28 and white tonight. Well, Darrell Hunter, from everybody I have talked to, not only do you marvel at his speed, this is a guy that runs a legit 4-3. You know, in, in high school at Middletown, Ohio, Division I track athlete of the year because of his ability and what he could do. And now I think he's been able to transfer over to the football field. Schools like West Virginia and Pitt offered him, but he decided to go to Miami of Ohio because of the education and opportunities and also because of an ability to be out there with the style of defense they play. Look at his size, 6'1", 201 pounds, running a legit 4-3. You'll see him one day in the NFL. Second and ten for Josh Harris and Bowling Green. They're opening drive. Swing it out to Steve Sanders with a block. He's at the ten. He's at the five. First and goal, Bowling Green. Out of Cleveland, sophomore gained 15. He caught 33 balls this year. But because of Miami's success, the last time that Bowling Green went up against him, the coaches told us that they're going to try to attack horizontally, get the football to the outside, and make Miami's defense commit numbers up towards the line of scrimmage. And they said once they have success with the bubble screen and with the option and attacking left and east and west, then they'll take their shots downfield when they get to one-on-one -on -one situations. They spot him down at the six. First and goal. Harris coming at you. Keeping. Scoring. Touchdown, BG. For Josh Harris, his 42nd career rushing touchdown. Extra point try for Sean Swisha. Out of the hold of Cole Magner, 7 0 Bowling Green. Six plays and 33 yards, thanks to that man. TJ Carswell came through the middle. Blocked the opening punt by Wapsig. Gave Bowling Green great field position for Harris to take it in. Hi, Ziggy Zumba. That's what they sing at BG when they score a touchdown. And they're singing now. Back here in Northwest Ohio, Bowling Green on the board for taking advantage of the block punt to take a 7-0 lead. Uh, Lee, you had mentioned this earlier. It's a, a good opportunity to get going. They haven't trailed in a game in about six weeks. And remember one thing. They've outscored their opponents 139 to 35 in the first. In all 12 games, they scored first. It's the first time this year they haven't scored first. We'll find out what they're made of. 
Swisham with the kickoff. Troubled. But picked up by Daryl Hunter and stopped at the 20 yard line. Well, we mentioned that these teams met 30 days ago on the Miami campus down in southwestern Ohio. Huge build up to this game. Bowling Green's Josh Harris struggled. Four turnovers for the team. These early and red zone turnovers denied them a good start. Meantime, Roethlisberger was sharp. 230 yards passing and a touchdown. Very solid in the second half. Bowling Green won 33 to 10. Martin Nance with a touchdown catch there. As Terry Heppner's team got that win, rolled through the rest of the league, undefeated in the match, to arrive here in the championship game tonight. First down, Roethlisberger to throw. Complete to Nance, who caught the touchdown you just saw. A pickup of 14 yards. Now, you may be wondering, if Miami won the head-to-head, -head, why is Bowling Green hosting the championship game? When you look at the story, story from that first game, seen here on ESPN2, pretty similar stat-wise, but Miami made the most of its opportunities. Bowling Green did not. The reason that we're here tonight is because it's predetermined in this league. The West champ was going to host the championship game. Right. Next year, the East champ will host the title game. Mike, you were there that night. These two teams played about five weeks ago. Lee and I were there here at Bowling Green five days prior to that meeting and saw Bowling Green dominate Northern Illinois. I think the emotions got the best of Bowling Green. They were flat the last time they played the Red Hawks. That's not the case tonight. Roethlisberger came down to the second receiver and found him. That's Mike Larkin, 56 Mike catch of the year. Run out of Pick up a five. We'll have second and five coming up. That's a big point right there about Roethlisberger. The fact is, did you see his mobility for Six foot five, 245 pounds. He moved out of the pocket, Kirk, and then he just drifted and rifle shot. I think he's the best pure passer when it comes to throwing a football I've seen this year right now. Wow, there's a strong he's statement. Good, we, we saw a good one last Thursday, Manning. Eli Manning. But I, the one thing about this guy is that in high school, he was a tremendous athlete, played high school basketball. He's a great receiver leading up into his senior year. That's when he took over as the starting quarterback that year. He's still relatively young as far as starting quarterback experience. Mike Smith, loss of three. Mitchell Crossley, second team all-conference. Didn't start because the senior Maurer started, but the sophomore came in and made a nice play. Uh, Kirk, you can't lose that point on Roethlisberger. Didn't play quarterback until his senior year. The coach's son was playing, and Roethlisberger was a wide receiver. That's one of the reasons some of the big schools here in the Midwest were not on the son of Ken and Brenda Roethlisberger. Well, it's, he came into college at about 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 about 195 pounds. He was incredibly athletic. People forget, you look at him now at 6'5", close to 250 pounds, he's mobile. I know Josh Harris is a guy that can run and throw, but Roethlisberger also has great mobility in the pocket. Third and six. Roethlisberger's throw is caught. First down for Mike Larkin into a tight spot in double coverage. Look at that defensive oh. line. Did you see that? Nobody had their hand on the ground. Well, you know what? That's why they went to... They, remember they told us that, that uh, Tim Beckwood said that they would use all kinds of defensive adjustments with nobody on the ball moving on. But, Kirk, there's throwing to your left. Nice shoulder turn. That guy's a good quarterback. Got his shoulders turned oh. through the football in time, and that's his favorite target. Now, statistically, he has some other receivers that can make great plays, but you'll find over the course of this evening, Mike Larkin is a good friend of his. Whenever it's third down, he tends to look up number six for a big catch. Great ball there by Roethlisberger. Freshman Ryan Robinson is in the game, top of the screen. First and ten. Making Roethlisberger think tonight. Carswell comes with heat. Big Ben up top. It's Robinson. It's caught. It's touchdown. He beat Jelani Jordan for 53 yards. And in coaches' speak, that's called answering. <laughs> what an answer. It's also called electrifying true freshman Ryan Robinson out of Toledo, Ohio, close by. And I think Ben Roethlisberger, his eyes lit up because he saw the coverage that he wanted. He had one-on-one. -on -one. The safety stayed up on the tight end. Morton and right behind him, Robinson on the post, perfectly thrown football. And that's how quick Miami can strike. Extra point try coming up for Jared Barsegian, the great grandnephew of the legendary Coach Ara. Ties the game at seven, the school record holder for extra points. Well, mom and dad saw their son, Big Ben, go three for three in the drive. 75-yard touchdown. The second pulled in in Ryan Robinson's career. I think we're gonna have a lot of points here tonight.
All right, here we go. On three. One. The CRV from Honda. For the way you really live. Or want to. Okay, plan B. The new Braun Free Glider automatically dispenses a protective shaving conditioner, reducing the risk of abrasion, giving a clean, close shave. And if you're not completely satisfied, we'll give you your money back. Braun, designed to make a difference. Excuse me, how do you feel about your stockbroker? The truth? I do all the research, he makes all the money. Please, with all the ideas I come up with, he should be paying me. Oh, we feel great. We switched to T.D. Waterhouse and we never look back. Why pay all that money to Merrill or Schwab? T.D. Waterhouse has free, objective research that makes it easy to come up with your own ideas and validate them yourself. I've never seen research like this online. So switch to T.D. Waterhouse, the alternative to higher-priced brokers like Merrill and Schwab. ESPN Pay-Per-View presents the 2003 K-1 World Championship, December 6th. To order, call your cable company, DirecTV or Dish Network. ESPN 2's College Football Thursday, the Mid-American Conference Championship, brought to you by the CRV from Honda, built for the way you really live, and by the new Braun Free Glider. Braun, designed to make a difference. Our pleasure to be on the campus of Bowling Green State University, 20 miles south of Toledo. Ryan Robinson's 53-yard touchdown catch for Roethlisberger. Touchdown 30 on the season, 77 in his career. And he'll be adding to it in the next game. This Miami team will play in the GMAC Bowl down in Mobile, Alabama. His kickoff needs to be scooped up and finally is by the backup running back. It will return here. Across the 30 and out to the 32 yard line. Todd Sodequist, the kickoff man, had to bring down BJ Lane. Nice job by Lane Sodequist. Went down, but he's okay. Well, Sunday night at 6 Eastern on ESPN, the College Game Day Bowl Selection Special. Reese Davis, Trev Alex, Mark May will have a complete breakdown of all the BCS bowls and every other bowl game. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. A lot will be decided after the uh, Bowl Championship Series slots are firmed up and selected, and the guys will break them all down for you. A lot of phone calls and conversation. Which teams are going where? We know Miami, as I mentioned, is going to play Louisville in the GMAC Bowl down in Mobile. We're not sure about Bowling Green. Harris's pass is deflected by Will Stanley, the senior out of Cleveland, Ohio. But Bowling Green's going to go to these bubble screens. You don't have enough time to get to the quarterback. So this time, Will Stanley out of St. Ignatius says, I'll show you how you defend that. You just knock the ball down. Heads up play and a good adjustment there early by Miami. The left tackle, Jimmy Williams, didn't move out quick enough. He got to make one quick step and cut the guy. When they're having a bubble screen, you got to get the hands down of the wide defender. And Jimmy Williams didn't do it. Second and 10 coming up. Williams takes his place on that left tackle spot. Back out of the gun, Harris. Another knockdown, almost intercepted by Turner Nande. That's a sophomore linebacker. Flag comes in just when you heard that roar. There was pushing 15 yards away from where the ball was. Todd Gearlings is the referee. Along with William Zercher, Norm Eubank, Steve Barnes, Dennis Jackson. Rich Ames and Kevin Schwartzel, an all-star crew, best of the MAC this year, working tonight. Well, anytime a linebacker is able to get over in the move of a slant, in the way of the slant, he's just simply reading the eyes of the quarterback, Josh Harris. Josh has to do a better job of looking that that play off, look to the middle of the field to hold the linebacker in the safety to open up that lane for Sharon. I like the way that official immediately stepped in and called that penalty. If they'd have done that at the Florida Florida yeah. State game where we were, yep. they might not have had all the problems. That's a good job of officiating right there. Take control. Control early. of the game is necessary. 
Matt Pusateri whistled for the flag. So Harris climbs under center. I believe it's the first time tonight. This is live to throw it for Cole Magner. That's, that's incomplete. Let's see. That, uh, we have a flag thrown. It is not a second forward pass. That was the first forward pass in the play. It might be grounding because it didn't come past the line of scrimmage, and it is. He, he, wait, I think wait, he was throwing that to wait, us. Wait, wait. He was honestly, he was trying to get that up here to LC. Sunshine Scooter. Backwards watch pass, this. forward pass. Well, watch. Is still Last legal. second, he just starts to throw it to the <laughs> sideline. <laughs> no, that's intentional grounding by the second. Oh, wait a minute. Did not get the line of scrimmage. Didn't get to the line of scrimmage. Lost what did I say? No yard. You're right. Right. I'll tell you what, Mike, penalty. Kirk, that's the first time I've ever seen that call Second on down. the guy receiving the lateral. Mm -hmm. I've always seen it on a quarterback, but... Well, look, he doesn't... You know, it's one thing to make an effort. He's throwing that out of bounds. I think he was hoping to make it look like he was being hit, and that the hit forced the ball to go to the sidelines. But he, he actually was aiming either for Mike or... Maybe Steven. that was the play they allowed in Alaska. I, <laughs> you think when he Cole, was in Alaska High School? You know, Cole Magner is from Alaska. Threw a touchdown pass to Josh Harris last week. Second and 18. Five in the pattern for Josh this time. Magner was the intended receiver. Steve Burke knocked him down. Oh, Bowling Green at number 23 in the country. 10 and 2, 7 and 1. You see out of the league, the win at Purdue. Huge win. You know, those two losses are nothing to be ashamed of. They've lost to Ohio State and Miami on the road. And they throwing Ohio State, remember? They were driving they were, late. They were driving, throwing the ball in the end zone to try to win it at Columbus. Lost to the Buckeyes 24 to 17 in Greg Brandon's first year as a head coach. Hey, when you lose to the teams that are 5th and 11th in the BCS standings right now, I don't care who you are. I don't care where you're from. That's a great season. 3rd and 18. They need to get out to the 34 for the first down. Harris throws to Magner well shy of the first down. And they'll kick it away. Derek Rehe on the stop. Derek, a sophomore out of Indiana, one of the few non-Ohio guys here in this game. And Bowling Green will kick it away, and the man who scored the touchdown, Ooh. Ryan Robinson, is a great oh. punt return. Oh. 18 per second in the country. Pressure on the punt man, Nate Fry. Six of his 43 were inside the 20 this year. Tough to get a big return from this field position. Though. Kicked it high, kicked it away. Robinson comes up to fair catch it, just shy of the 20-yard line. 27-yard punt, Roethlisberger back on the field. Roethlisberger this last drive, he started to catch fire here. He's five of six on the night, showing you a little bit of what he can do outside of the pocket, also singing in the pocket, spread the ball all over the place, and then got the big one, one-on-one -on -one coverage, and a big playmaker here for the Miami, Ryan Robinson, a young freshman, one-on-one -on -one coverage. Every time he gets that, he's gonna try to get the ball thrown downfield. In the last three games, he's thrown for 903 yards, 70% of the passes, 11 touchdowns in the last three games. First down, fake the throw, then give the run to Cal Murray. Murray takes it out to about the 26. Good six-yard pickup on first down. Mitch Hewitt there to help make the tackle. Murray gained 808 yards this season. Mike Smith, who replaces him in the lineup, 676 yards. So out of that tailback position, they had nearly 1,500 yards of production. 484 yards, 24 touchdowns, and 4.8 per carry for that position, Mike. Those numbers updated through the night. Second and four. Roethlisberger, three options downfield. Martin Nance, first down at the 44-yard line. Keon Newsom made the tackle, but they picked up 18. Let's go down to the field and Jerry Punch. Guys, there was some concern uh, on Ben Roethlisberger last, after last week's game at uh, UCF in Florida. He only played a half, but he separated his right shoulder and did not practice this past Saturday, Sunday, or Monday. He came out early today to throw, but we've already seen that concern has gone away. There's no problem at all whatsoever with that throwing shoulder. Jerry, uh, one of the lighter degrees of separation? 
Uh, there are. It was a very, very mild. The first degree and third being the worst, but they still didn't have him practice. They were concerned about the cold weather creating a problem as the night went on, but he's throwing extremely well here so far. All right, pal. Thank you. From the 44, first down. Mike Smith a run. Gains about a yard. We'll have second and nine coming up. Swimming at the bottom of the pile, Jeff Runnels, senior from California. On a cold night, you'd think it would be bothering him, but he seems to have the adrenaline flowing and his arm looks outstanding. Throwing the football with great velocity. The other thing is, guys, and just watching him here in person, the thing that you appreciate more and more in seeing him in person is his ability and presence in the pocket, but also the athletic ability to get outside, break, contain, buy himself a little time, and not lose that arm strength throwing the ball downfield or his focus on the defense downfield. Second and nine, play action. Holding flag comes in, and a pass interference flag comes in as well. Two separate fouls here. If they are where they normally should be, we should have offsetting penalties and replace second and nine. Jelani Jordan had the coverage on Mike Larkin. Sorted out. Holding offense. And pass interference defense. Craig Brandon was looking at that <laughs> second and long. Offense, pass interference, defense, fouls offset, replay the down, second down. Only Oklahoma has won more games in a row than Miami. Miami lost the opener at Iowa, has reeled off 11 in a row since, including wins at Northwestern, at Colorado State, and Cincinnati, out of the league. Their strength of schedule is in the 80s. However, their computer rankings are very good. That's why they are 11th in the BCS standings. Matter of fact, in two computers, they are four, and LSU is second, with Southern Cal a third, meaning Miami could factor into the championship picture with what happens here tonight. Toss to Martin Nance, out to the 35. Jansen Patton in the coverage, but a pickup of 19. I got to talk about the offensive line right now. They've only had six sacks in the last six games, one out of every 32 pass attempts, and that was a full blitz by Bowling Green Kirk, and every one of those offensive linemen stepped up, hit the man in the mouth, and boom, got the ball away. That was a tremendous play offensive line-wise. Yep, you're exactly right. And the big thing is, I think it's the combination of being able to run the football, throwing from outside, sitting in the pocket. Bowling Green's bringing pressure, but right now that offensive line is enjoying the tempo of this offense and having their way up front the trenches. Todd Blondot snaps it. Pump and go. Deep downfield for the end zone. Good coverage by Keon Newsom on the pass intended for Ryan Beesing, a freshman, one of two identical twins on this Miami team. Beesing's brother, John, is a linebacker. Keon Newsom, that time 17, makes this play because he turns around and looks for the ball at the last minute. Watch right there. That's why it's not pass interference. Also, that kid's a pretty good athlete. He played basketball in 2002 here for the Bowling Green basketball team. Newsom reading the eyes of Beesing and then coming back yep. to the football. That's Very why important. it wasn't a pass. Yep. How many times have we seen this oh. year where the yep. defensive back gets lost and just runs into the receiver? Second and 10 for Roethlisberger. Already 130 yards passing. Play breaks down. Ben touched it. And gets three, and here come some flags. Yep. Even though it's on the Bowling Green sideline, they took out Roethlisberger after he stepped on the white. And it'll cost him 15. Matt Leiniger, the sophomore, knocked him out. Leiniger's 94. It's a little bump, but he is out of bounds. And... High-profile quarterback in a championship game. The quarter, the uh, referees are watching. It was just a touch, but it was the fact that he hit him out of bounds. Come on, as a quarterback. Yeah. I know, but as a quarterback, you can't you can't endorse that. I want to bring it back again to the fact that last week we saw play, Florida State play Florida, yep. and they let these cheap shots go early in the game. Eventually, the game got out of control. I cannot say the it enough. Police in this thing, aren't they? Very, very good, Kirk. Yeah, because possibly. you know why? They probably talked to those officials down there who said, "Don't let this happen." In a big what an embarrassment. Uh, you know, too good a football game for that to be the yeah. memory. First and ten, Miami back in the red zone, where they've been excellent this year. 
Roethlisberger has four options to throw. Directing traffic as he's got all kinds of time. Now a dump down to the man blocking for him. Mike Smith, and that play got to the 13-yard line. Well, what did Greg Brandon tell us, guys? We've got to get some pressure on number seven. <laughs> well, Mike, the reason they're not able to get pressure is right now they're on their heels. Usually, if you watch Bowling Green when they're...